Well, the end game of one of Australia's biggest disasters out of the GFC is about to be played out. In its pomp back in 2007, the Centro Group of Companies controlled about $26 billion worth of uh, retail property assets in Australia and the US, built up by a debt fueled buying spree. The US subprime credit crisis completely unglued that strategy, rendering one of the company's funds, Centro Properties, spectacularly insolvent. It also left an extraordinary legacy of litigation and infuriated lenders looking for an escape route. In a complicated series of meetings later this month, shareholders will be asked to merge the healthy and distinctly unhealthy parts of the business. A vote in which some of the shareholders will have the unenviable decision to accept either five cents in the dollar or nothing at all. I spoke to Centro Group CEO and property industry veteran Robert Sennon about the high stakes salvage operation that he's been attempting. Robert Sennon, you're um, coming to the end of a nightmarish, complicated reconstruction project. But wouldn't it have been better just to sell all the shopping centres and send all the cash to the stakeholders, shareholders and banks and so on, according to what they deserved? Alan, that would have been one alternative, um, certainly one that we considered very seriously. Uh, there, there were a couple of problems with that that just made that impossible. The, the first one was that to have been able to have sold all the assets, we would have had to get the consent of all of the funds. And that's exactly the process that we're going through now. So without going through the process that we're going through now, we couldn't have sold our main undertakings. We could have sold individual assets. We could have sold the US business as we did, but we couldn't have sold the whole business. But at least everyone would have ended up with cash instead of shares in some new entity. Indeed, uh, we could have ended up with cash. The problem then is that we've got two outstanding class actions and those, that cash would have been, I would imagine, have got trapped inside the companies or company and couldn't have been distributed and certainly would have emboldened the claimants uh, under the class actions. So I, I don't think that would have been a practical outcome. But there's also a very positive reason why we did it this way. Aggregation actually allows the company to take advantage of what have been great assets. They've been very well managed. There are very significant development opportunities inside those assets. And for our shareholders and the unit holders and the various funds, I think the ability to take advantage of those in, internal growth options rather than passing them off to somebody else, I think that creates far more value uh, for people. I'm aware that at least Lend-Lease is interested in buying the shopping centres, in fact all of them at once, and there's probably other bidders, so couldn't you have got an auction going? Well, th there's always the possibility of an auction once the company is listed and at that point the best dress, best price deal will win. Uh, and that's exactly we want to, what we want to create. Uh, yes, we, we get approached periodically for either on an asset basis or we've been approached on, on an unconditional, with unconditional type deals, ex exploratory proposals to where people have looked at our assets or considered acquiring our assets, but we've certainly never received uh, any, anything that would be um, executable. The Centro property shareholders just about get wiped out, they get about five cents in the uh, dollar, but uh, is it fair to say that their vote doesn't matter as much as the Centro retail shareholders? And that if Centro property shareholders vote against it, the whole thing will still go ahead. But if Centro retail shareholders vote against it, it won't. To get the aggregation to take place, there are many resolutions that need to be passed by many stakeholders. So the the essence of our transaction, the complexity of our transaction comes from the fact that the votes are, all, are interconditional. Now, were any of the stakeholders who are junior to the secured lenders at the CNP level to vote no, there's the possibility that aggregation could still take place, albeit with, a, with a, an insolvent CNP, Central Properties Group. Now, it could happen, but there's no certainty of that. It's not something that's actually been tested in the Australian marketplace. But the advice is that the likelihood is that that, that could work, but it's uncertain. But with CER, of course, were they to vote no, then in, in that case, aggregation would not proceed. And so we're back to the situation where we're in today, which is an unsustainable situation. What about you personally? I mean, how have you found all this? I presume you had a life before this happened. <laughs> uh, Alan, I, um, I, I'll be very pleased if we get a successful outcome. This is something that 
the management team, its advisors, the boards have worked 24-7 on. It's been a fairly brutal exercise for all of us. But we'll be pleased because if, if we get to the aggregation, I think it's, it's, it's good for all the parties that I can think of, whether it be the industry, the retail industry itself, the tenants, the suppliers, the certainty for the employees, where we'll be able to retrieve some value for the, for the various stakeholders. We would have liked to have, have, have created more value than we did, but those are the cards we were dealt with. And how do you reflect on this thing called Centro? Would you say it's basically a bunch of good assets in a uh, dreadful structure? Yeah, I, uh, Alan, uh, you know, clearly huge amount of value was destroyed um, in, in the lead up to the, uh, to, to the global financial crisis. Uh, shareholders lost billions, the banks lost billions, employees lost their retirement nest eggs. Uh, it, it's, it, it was clearly a, a, a disaster. There's no other way to put it. You only need to look at the, the, the outcome of all of this. What we've tried to do is to just build on what we had. And I think if, if we can create this, uh, this new vehicle, if it does get approved by all the stakeholders, I think it'll be a, a great outcome for all the constituencies. So I, I, I hope people vote yes, because the alternative, as I see it, is very, very uncertain. I can see tremendous value destruction taking place at various levels. You'll, we will know that the junior stakeholders at the CMP level, which are the, the shareholders, the convertible bondholders, they'll get nothing. Uh, there will be receivers appointed at various state, at various places in, in the group. The uncertainty that that will cause the chaos. Yeah, well, not to mention the lawsuits that will be unleashed as well. Well, I, I suspect there will be a lot of a lot of that as well. It's 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 totally uncharted waters. If if receivers are appointed, I doubt that there are enough receivers in Australia uh, to uh, we'd have to Im import receivers, and it'll be very profitable for some of the people in the services industries, not the least lawyers and receivers. But you know, put, putting putting all of that aside. It's just so clear that aggregation is the right outcome for people. And, and I, I would expect that when people have weighed up the risk of voting against this versus the benefits, that they'll, I'm quietly confident people will vote the right way. Thanks very much for joining us, Robert Tennant. Thank you, Alan. Cheers.